Hey guys, it's Barrett with The Gimpy Camper. I wanted to talk to you today about something that people ask me about all the time, and that's winterizing and dewinterizing. I do this process on an every other week basis. This isn't something that you have to do just because it's called winterizing, where you leave it done all winter long. You don't have to do that. Now, I was recently talking to a uh, Dometic representative at the R Village rally, and he said he never really thought about that because you have, you know, the people that live in Florida or the South that never have to winterize. And you have people that live in like Michigan, Wisconsin, that kind of stuff where it's always a harsh winter. And they winterize on day one and 90% of the time leave it winterized the whole time. But here in Southeast Tennessee, we're kind of in a, in between those two areas. So, you know, I love winter camping in Southeast Tennessee. On average, you're going to have a day that's about 40 degrees or so. And to me, I love that. I would like that better than going out when it's 100 degrees and humid. Especially if there's not somewhere that you can just, you know, jump in a lake or something right beside you. I camp year-round. And you can't say, well, it's because you got a camper there. Well, I, I, I go backpacking in the wintertime, too. I went on a backpacking trip in December. I loved it. As long as you have the proper equipment, it's great. Now, what I'm going to walk you through today is how I winterize. You know, there's two different methods. The first method is using the RV antifreeze, and the second method is using compressed air. I use compressed air because I do this all the time. You know, we're not in one of those climates where it routinely goes to negative 50, and so I think that it works just as good for my purposes. Now, if you had to compare the two, I would say that the RV antifreeze gives you a little bit more protection. So there is that. But like I say, I use compressed air and I'm just gonna walk you through how I do this. Okay guys, so the first step in doing this winterization is you're gonna to have to drain your fresh water tank. That's what I do first anyway. So find your fresh water drain and open it up so it drains out. Step two is to turn your water heater bypass valve to the on position. Then you wanna remove the cover for the water heater. This is a suburban water heater. Um, after you remove the cover, then what we want to do is to flip the switch off. This switch is a secondary electrical switch. This is just a safety measure so that you don't turn the electric water heater on with no water in it when you dewinterize it and therefore pop the uh, heating element in it. Then we need a 1 and 1 16th socket to loosen the anode rod and go ahead and pull that out. That's going to release the water to start coming out and then to really get it to drain faster you can pull that release valve on the top it just lets air in and lets the water drain a lot quicker i speeded this up on the camera but it takes three or four minutes usually to get all that water to drain out once with all the water drains out i usually take that anode rod and i just stick it right back in there in the cavity of the water heater and put the cover back on now you want to find your low point drains. Mine are located in a very bad place. It's right in the middle underneath the camper, so i got to crawl under there. And they also have caps instead of valves, which I'm eventually going to change. But you got to take those caps off. Let all the water that's in each of those lines drain out as much as it will. And then just put the caps back on or close the valve if you have one. Now you want to connect the air hose to the city water. You can just use a blowout plug. This is really cheap and simple. I have a regulator that I got from Viair. Because I have my air compressor mounted under my camper, and I always leave my pressure high, and that way it regulates the pressure so that I don't have to get in and, and cut the pressure down at the air compressor. Then I have to start the generator because that's the way that I power my air compressor. I don't usually have power wherever I winterize at. Now I usually start at this hose just because it's right there where I'm at. So I turn each faucet on one by one. So you turn the cold water on, wait until you feel mostly air coming out, then turn the cold water off, turn the hot water on, same thing, feel till most of the water is gone. For this first round, I just go around to all the different faucets. I usually go from here to the outdoor shower on the other side, to the kitchen, and then to the bathroom to do the sink the shower and the toilet this first round is just kind of preliminary getting most of the water out so i just get it to where it's a mist of air coming out and there's still quite a bit of water and then after i do all that then i go back and i go through each one of these faucets for a second time after the second time i still feel some really fine mist whenever i'm done but i just 
let that ride because that's not going to freeze up and cause a problem in my opinion. Then we're going to go around with the pink antifreeze. I usually put about a cup in both sink drains, uh, the two in the kitchen, the one in the bathroom, the shower pan, and the toilet. This is where I usually stop. The only part of the system that this doesn't protect really is the pump because there's still a little bit of water in the pump. If you really want to, you can disconnect the air line from the city water. You can turn the pump on, get the little bit of water that's in the pump out in the lines, but then you got to reconnect the air hose and expel that from the water lines again. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.